So the whole thing is like, an artist is, to me, is separate from society in a lot of ways. Um, and needs to follow their own vision without compromise uh, and without influence from the evil forces that, that uh, is surrounding you. are strong and those are the forces that brainwash everybody and turn them into you know robots and all those people wish that any creative person would just go away and die they would be much more comfortable without someone saying hey the world could be different. This is how I see the world.
So for me, I would rather really limit my access to that world. I don't want to look at newspapers, magazines, TV. I'd rather just concentrate on what's important and eliminate all the distractions. What and is it? Doing music is what's important for me in the, the most honest way that I can. Now I wanted to show Zorn what I had done so far. He hadn't seen a single frame yet, and I was very curious about what he'd say. I actually planned to film that session and make it an episode of the movie itself. But then I realized the movie felt complete already, or better, incomplete in just the right way. So when I finally talked to John, filming him watching this film no longer seemed necessary. I hear different kinds of music, and I'm always listening, I'm always buying CDs and checking things out, and some things attract me and other things don't. And they, they come into the, the circle of my, my world. They're, they're kind of absorbed into who I am, and then they come out in different ways. And you begin to sense where to go. It's through a lifetime of buying these things and getting burned and getting your life changed just so many times. So why did that record change my life? I realized that I can combine or put together things um, the way I want instead of the way other people want. When you're the, the kind of artist that I strive to be, you want to do more than just give people what they want. You want to challenge yourself first and challenge the musicians second and not even think about the audience. And I thought this is what John Zorn did with his music, I mean with Torture Garden, although it did seem difficult to combine these things. Well see that, that's an example of um, setting yourself a musical problem and trying to solve it. I was trying to get as many different kinds of music together in one place and create uh, uh, a composition that had compositional integrity but do it like in six seconds or in 30 seconds, keep it under a minute in the hardcore tradition. And that is something that I learned. Everything can be treated the same. It's, it's not that I have to value this more or this less only because other people tell me to. I mean, art school teachers become friends, it doesn't matter. So for me, it was not only a revelation in musical terms. I, I thought that it could be a live concert. <laughs> I actually want and which of those things can I do? I started finding my own way and pulled away from from other people's expectations. Everyone has to do it their own way. You have to figure, you have to pull yourself out what, whatever way you can. I mean sometimes it's just uh, luck or a freak or an accident that you find yourself, maybe for the wrong reasons, compelled to do what you do. But then if you continue to learn and to work on what you're doing and believe in it, um, I think you can strip yourself of the wrong reasons and get to the right reasons. Anybody that can accomplish anything, wow, that's amazing. Because nobody really wants you to do anything. And you've, you're creating a film. It's not easy. Look at the people you have to work with. Look at these clowns. <laughs> But that's if you can surround yourself with good people who believe in what you're doing and you know you can create a positive environment that you can work in, then you've got it, that's it, you're set. And it doesn't matter whether you win that award at Sundance or get that review in the Times, fuck that shit. Once you create something good, you know inside that it's good, you can put it on the shelf and never see it again in your whole life. I mean, think about it, move on to the next one. Just know that it's there.
I didn't get any support system from my parents growing up, and I looked elsewhere to find them, inside myself and from my friends. And that's who I am. And maybe I'm fortunate, and maybe that's why I'm still doing what I'm doing, because I learned to reparent myself. I wasn't happy and totally convinced all the time. There were certainly times of doubt and, and moments where I thought, um, it's really impossible to make such a film. And maybe in the beginning I followed John Zorn's way and not my own. But I think I learned over time what my thing is. And I keep learning. You know, you gotta keep pushing, you gotta keep doing it, you gotta believe in what you're doing, you gotta believe in your friends, you gotta find a support system with your friends, and you gotta say fuck you to the rest of the world and just do it. Well, I did it, and what can I say? It's the greatest feeling one can have. <laughs> Imagine you have the sky at night with all the stars. Then you put a bookshelf on top of it. I love this quote and I wanted to start and end my film with it. Once we end a piece, and there's three ways to end it, either just cut it, boom, or um, slow fade, whatever it is, slowly fade down, or coda, which means the people who are playing stop and the, and the remaining players can do a short coda. Um, once a piece ends, we destroy the memories, they do not come back again. And that means the film is almost over. Is there anything still to be told? Maybe there is. Moments that are important for John, for others. But that would be another film. As for me, I can let it go now. I will put it out and let it have its own life. The story of this film is not my story any longer, and I am not this work, but it is part of my reality. Does it matter whether it all actually happened or whether it's just the product of my imagination? It is part of me either way, and that part you do know now, whatever that means to you and your reality. And now, what would be a good ending for the film? There are eight million stories in the naked city, and this has been one of them. No, I think I've heard that before. And there are so many more stories, all those that actually never happen. Hello? Hello? Hmm, too late. All right, I think I'll give this picture a title now. Yeah. Imagine the sky at night with all the stars. Then you put a bookshelf on top of it.